Good afternoon, everybody. Are you all well? It's a bit quiet. Are you well? Yeah, good, good. Okay. Um, I'm uh, Peter McCormack. I'm a journalist from the UK, uh, a Bitcoiner, a Ledger user since 2017. Uh, and uh, I've been asked to come and moderate this panel, which I think is a very interesting panel because we're going to be talking some about the some of the most crazy technologies that may impact upon our crypto slash Bitcoin security. Uh, we've got an excellent panel. I'm going to ask Matthew, uh, Charles and Ian to introduce themselves and what they do so you know who we're with. So I'll start with you, Ian. Uh, my name is Ian Myers. I'm a professor at the University of Maryland and a co-inventor of uh, Zcash, the first thing that did ZK proofs, privacy for blockchains. And then that was the first paper I wrote in grad school. The last one is a thing called Zexi, which is for privacy preserving smart contracts. So this is used in Alio, Aztec, and a number of other projects. So you probably know me. Uh, my name is Charles Guillemet. I'm CTO at Ledger. My background is uh, cryptography and security. Uh, and I'm very proud to be on stage with this uh, world-renowned uh, cryptographer. And there was something quite fun. When I studied cryptography uh, 18 years ago, that was a dusty field for mathematicians that were uh, staying in, their, uh, in the ground and, and, this, and this kind of thing. And with blockchain technology and Bitcoin, a lot of investment has been made. And now it's, um, it's a fancy field. Everyone wants to be in. And a lot of progress has been made. So it's really uh, amazing to, to see this. Uh, my name is Matthew Green. I'm also a professor uh, at Johns Hopkins. I have worked in this field on many of the same projects as Ian, Zcash, Alio, other things, for many, many years. And I've watched cryptocurrency come from kind of like there's this new Bitcoin thing all the way up to new systems that do privacy, do smart contracts, do all sorts of amazing things. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. Like when I started this field, we were talking about maybe someday we'll use some of this crypto. And now you're all here. So thank you. Thanks, guys. So um, I'm just a, a, a Bitcoin who doesn't want to have his Bitcoin stolen from anybody. I don't know anything about cryptography. So uh, obviously, I'm very interested in the world of uh, some of these new technologies that are uh, uh, there's a lot of research going into, them, which is AI and uh, quantum. Um, I'm going to start with you, Charles. Uh, I, I honestly don't know how you sleep at night uh, with the job you have to do protecting so many people's and so much value in this world. But uh, for the last uh, eight years, I've got to know you with regards to nerdy hackers trying to trying to get into and steal from us. But this world of quantum, the world of AI, what do you worry about most with this? Um, about about quantum. Um, so the idea of, of quantum is that one day we might be able to uh, create quantum computers, and these computers would be ex extremely fast to do like specific things, including uh, cryptography. Um, However, there, there, was, um, there was something that is important to say. Uh, they, we are trying, human, the humankind uh, is trying to build these quantum computers for, for a long time, but there are plenty of uh, scientific and engineering challenges that are very difficult to, to overcome. However, we are seeing uh, some, uh, some progress. To be honest, I'm not really worried by uh, seeing a quantum computer. My bet would be that I'm not even sure I will see a quantum computer um, able to break modern cryptography in my lifetime. That would be my bet. But frankly, we, no one knows at the end, like, because technology can be very fast, and it's possible that it will be uh, faster than, than we think, and we must prepare. And the thing is, we, we have we have solution. We know already algorithms that are um, immune, that are able to, that, that are protected against a quantum computer, um, and, and we have and we have uh, ways to implement them. The only difficulty is to find a consensus on how to make it happen. And uh, this is not a technical um, uh, challenge. It's more like a, um, a social and consensus challenge. And, and this part uh, could be very tricky, especially when it comes to, uh, to, to, to blockchain, because you need to, to make sure that everyone agrees on the future of Bitcoin or Ethereum, Alio, and and all the all the, um, the blockchain that you would like to migrate uh, towards uh, post-quantum crypto. So th this part could be uh, tricky, and, uh, and I think we will see interesting uh, uh, things uh, in this journey. Thank you. Uh, Matthew, uh, as Charles said, uh, and a lot of people have said this, that uh, we may never see quantum uh, computers able to uh, attack our cryptography in our lifetime, but at the same time, it may happen, and it may happen without us uh, knowing it. It may be developed by nefarious parties who won't release and 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 and, and let us know that it exists. So, first question is: um, uh, 
should we be preparing in advance just in case? And what is the broad range of timeframes we're working with here? I like to believe it's not going to happen in my lifetime, but I, you know, we're in security and you have to prepare. And when you start looking at what might happen, how much money is in crypto today? I mean, how a trillion dollars, right? Like a huge amount of money is just sitting in these systems waiting for somebody to basically pick them. Um, and the locks are secured by crypto. We already have algorithms that can, you know, we know how to break them. Um, we're just missing the computer that can actually do this. And so the question is, you know, there's been progress. There was an announcement today in uh, Hacker News that I saw an article about uh, quantum supremacy. And no, that doesn't mean anyone's going to break crypto this year, but it means that stuff is happening that we wouldn't have predicted a few years ago. So we should be preparing. We should lock everything down. The last thing I want to say about this, though, is the irony is the very best commercial use case for quantum computers, the most lucrative one, is breaking crypto. And so if we end that use case, maybe we'll just end quantum crypto, quantum computers in the first place. I, I hope that's not true, because the tech is very neat, but it might happen. Do you want to add to that, Atul? Um, <clears throat> likewise, I hope it's not going to happen in our lifetimes. For cryptocurrency specifically, I'm a little skeptical the transition will actually happen, because uh, the main thing that motivates uh, worries about quantum uh, computers is this notion of what's called a store and decrypt adversary. This is like the boogeyman that collects all your data, and even if a thousand years in the future they get a quantum computer, they can read all your sensitive government email. But if you're not a government, and if you're just dealing with money on chain now, that's a little bit more of an abstract threat. And the transition from a standard ECDSA signatures, which are like 64 bytes, to post-quantum signatures, which are north of four kilobytes, I'm kind of curious if engineering teams are going to be willing to pay the costs and the effort to do that when it's a hypothetical of, oh, this might happen. And I think it'll actually be a little bit um, rocky, that transition, just in terms of politics and organizations and, and standards, unless we get ZK roll-ups and then costs don't matter. I, but I think that at some point, the fear of the possibility a quantum computer exists will be so uh, big that we will have no choice but moving, moving towards PQC. I, I will think so in general, but when you start having to make sacrifices on the transactions per second you get, uh, I mean, basically which FUD wins out, right? FUD about not being able to replace Visa or FUD about quantum computers, I, I don't know. Um, but it's going to be an interesting set of discussions. I, I think we will see different forks on, on the blockchains and, and probably like a several versions of uh, Bitcoin or other, other chain will, uh, will live at the same time. But I, I agree that I, I don't think it will happen uh, anytime uh, soon, I, I would say. It will take time to, to see those uh, forks. For, um, for the less technically minded, ha ha what are the trade-offs here that come with quantum resistant um, signatures? I mean, basically the signatures are, are larger. The public keys are larger, the signatures are larger. Surprisingly, the s signing and verification algorithms aren't as bad as you think, but basically we've got to move to different math. And the math are these things called lattices, typically, or they're these weird hash-based functions. But either way, the keys are way bigger and the signatures are bigger. So you've got to stuff more data per transaction into your blockchain, which is already limited in the amount of data it can hold, particularly if you like Bitcoin. Uh, Charles, do you think you have to worry about it a, a little bit more? No, no. Again, I, I, I don't worry about, about this. Um, and mostly because, like, first of all, I don't think the threat is immediate. And secondly, we have solutions. So at some point, I think there will, there will be some consensus around the world that we need to move towards uh, PQC. And we will overcome the different challenges. You mentioned like the, the scalability of the blockchain, the, the size of the transaction. But we, we, we know solutions today. We know how to overcome these challenges. So at some point, we will reach some consensus and we will uh, implement this. And, and there is something that, that, will, that will be a uh, trigger also is the fact that the NIST, which is the National Institute of Standard and Technology, um, I, that is creating plenty of standards, but also creating the standard for security in cryptography. And they recently uh, changed their recommendations regarding uh, post-quantum crypto. And they recommend that all the cryptography to move uh, towards post-quantum crypto by 2035. So, in one, in one, on one hand, uh, 10 years is long, but when you have to make sure that everyone agrees on the plan, that, uh, that might be uh, not that long. And with quantum, do we have bigger problems to worry about if there are, is the breakthrough that can break uh, wider cryptography with the internet? Uh, apart from uh, uh, today, today, quantum is not really a threat. Uh, it's an hip hypothetical future threat, but we have real threat, real risk, uh, every day, and this is what I, I was uh, talking about uh, right before. 
like attackers are getting really more sophisticated and they are they are stealing a lot of crypto like more than two billions a year this is this is huge especially if you consider uh, two billions uh, against uh, four trillions uh, this is not uh, this is not nothing and um, and the the thing is these teams the more uh, they succeed to steal money the more money they have to create like more sophisticated attacks so we have in we, we are in this uh, bad flywheel or good flywheel for attackers so these are the real threats we really need to uh, care about and this is exactly the mission for ledger protecting the skis making sure that the user understand the, the, this transaction creating transaction check like this is really what we are um, thinking about every day and um, and if i had to sleep bad in the night that would be really about this and not that much about, crypt about post quantum crypto which is a threat that we need to take into account but it's not a today threat it's a future threat i just want to say about that 10 year transition by nist um 10 years by us government agency standards that's like there's a fire like that's terrifyingly fast so they're freaked out about something um, so it's, that's, it sounds like a long time, but it's not. So there's more, uh, more of an immediate threat uh, with regards to thinking about AI and privacy, though. Um, so maybe, maybe about the privacy. Um, Bitcoin is the main blockchain today, uh, it used to be. Um, and, and Bitcoin is not private at all. Like everything is transparent on chain. You can see every single transaction from the beginning of the, of the blockchain. You, you don't really have like a matching between one transaction and the name of a person, but you have, you have like some um, very advanced uh, companies that are even able to, uh, to, to create uh, this link. So Bitcoin is not uh, private and on the internet today, um, nothing is really private because you are giving your data away to uh, some different companies um, against the service. When it's free, you are the product, your data is, is, is the product. Um, and I think like privacy is becoming like increasingly uh, important, and we really need to create the tools that empower our users to 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 have privacy. And privacy is really about uh, transparency and control. You need you need to be able to choose um, like what kind of data you share and what kind of data you don't share. So you need to be aware and, and to have the to have the control. And when it comes to blockchain, we have uh, we have a few examples that are implementing uh, privacy, and I will probably let you the floor uh, to talk about those ones. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, look, I, I've worked on privacy for so long that I've said everything that I'm ever going to say about it. But look, Bitcoin. This idea that we're going to post all of our transactions onto networks like Bitcoin and then everybody can see them is insane. And now we're doing it for stable coins. And like, you want to pay somebody, then everybody in the world knows their salary and like knows how much they're getting every month. I mean, if you've ever done like a large crypto transaction, you have this like fear wait a second, someone's going to know my wallet address. They're going to know how much money I have. This is crazy. And I understand we started this whole project back in like 2008 and we did the best we could back then. But like now we have much better technology and the only thing stopping us, there are two things stopping us. One of them is, you know, like a little bit of first mover and we're seeing people start to move towards privacy. And the other has been at least the U.S. government and world governments being very terrified of privacy on chain. And I don't know if you know, like our government has sort of lost its mind over the last year or two. So we're no longer terribly worried about the regulators kind of stopping privacy, at least for a while. I'm not saying that's good or bad. It's just the way it is. So I do think we're going to see a lot of things changing pretty quickly now, and we'll see what happens in the future. And I just add, I think in the course of those 10 years, the notion of, uh, Privacy is a threat for a blockchain. It went from being an abstract, yeah, somebody could de-anonymize you too. Okay, Elliptic and TRM and chain analysis can do it, but I don't have to worry about it. To the thing with AI now being realistically, those analysis tools are now in the hands of increasingly everybody. And so if there's a single person, you don't want to know your data to know, oh, hey, I can hack you and get your money. I think this is now starting to be a really real threat, even for DeFi cryptocurrency, let alone now TradFi and stablecoins, where that was table stakes even in 2017 when we were starting to have these discussions with banks about blockchains and privacy. So it's been a nice sort of change over the past 10 years. What are the AI attack vectors that exist for crypto people? Um, so you can use AI for plenty of different things. Uh, when you are an attacker, you, AI is just another tool to automate, uh, find vulnerabilities. So it's a very powerful, powerful tool. 
The good news is that uh, when you are on the defense side, you can also use AI to create a better, better tool to, 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 to defend yourself. Um, but there was something that is really interesting with AI and, and crypto. Um, with AI, we, we are going to see like plenty of content online and it will be very difficult. It is already very difficult to distinguish uh, what is coming from a human from what is coming from a bot. And this, this will be like increasingly uh, more difficult uh, in, in the future. And, and the thing is like we have tools uh, to, uh, to, 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 to distinguish human from, from bots and this, these tools are cryptography. When you, know, when you know someone, he, he just has to authenticate himself towards you so that you, are, you have like strong cryptographic guarantees that you are talking to this uh, specific person and not uh, to, to an AI. So you don't have to trust an image or, or anything. You, you can trust like a cryptographic uh, signature that proves that you are talking to, um, to, to someone. So it's, it's more like a cryptographic uh, tool. Uh, you can use this on blockchain. This is a, what we can call like identity in a broader uh, way, but this is really like a cryptographic primitive that allows you to prove that you are yourself. Um, also, like proving humanity is something that we are uh, working on at Ledger, like uh, using the device and, and using different attributes, you, you will be able to prove that you are a human. Um, also, when, when, when you do that, then comes the uh, privacy question, like there's three, uh, three things are really related. So you would like to prove different attributes uh, about you, but you, do, you don't necessarily want to reveal everything about you. Maybe you want to prove that you are over, over 18 without showing your ID card. And now more and more uh, websites are asking you to prove that you are over 18. Um, but the solution is not to show your ID card. You don't want to do that. You just want to prove um, that you, have o you are over 18. And there exist uh, cryptographic primitives to do, to do that, like uh, zero knowledge proof is really like the, the best suited uh, technology for that. Yeah, I mean, you can even go one step further and not even tell someone exactly who you are. Just, I am a human. I have like a ledger device or an iPhone or some piece of hardware and some evidence that like I've had a Gmail account for 10 years or an Uber ride share history. These are various tools for proof of humanity. And you don't reveal who you are. You just say, I'm human. And I have say this pseudonymous identity in this forum. And we can, we can do that. We even have tools to hold you responsible for what you do and ban you if you misbehave. This is work that's come out of my lab uh, in the past year. Um, so this is sort of a, a sort of new frontier for sort of cypherpunk applications as ZK. It's, it's really exciting. Uh, we have about uh, two minutes left, so about 30 seconds for each of you on this final question. But for the people in the room trying to navigate this world of being sovereign but also protecting their security, from your time and experience working in this market, what, what's the biggest piece of advice you can give to people? Uh, with you, Matthew. Gosh, uh, that's a, uh, not, not wanting to be the first one to answer that question. Um, okay, so my general view is we have great hardware devices. And even, you know, I know we've heard a lot about like your phone isn't secure. And like for some people, that is true. I wouldn't store a million dollars on your phone. But when it comes to like your personal data and when it comes to, uh, you know, your identity, a lot of that information kept on a decent phone is very secure. I think that's going to be a huge anchor in the future. And I think, um, you know, these for these multi-million dollar use cases, we've got other devices that do this very well. So we have tools to do this. I wish more people used them, and that would probably take some of those hundreds of millions of dollars out of the, you know, theft ecosystem we're seeing now. Yeah, I, I think, like, we are entering in a new era. Like, technology is really progressing uh, very fast, and it will create a, a completely new world. Um, it's not, it's not really new, like when you, when you think like 20 years ago, there was no internet, like the, the world completely changed very rapidly and that, would, that will be even more, uh, even faster uh, in, in, the near, in the near future. And, and I'm not really like frightened, it, it creates new challenge and, and everything, but we also, have, we, we also are creating new technology to overcome these uh, challenges. And I'm, I'm really a big fan of uh, the idea of uh, using zero knowledge proof, especially when it comes to, uh, to privacy, so that you can reveal only part of attribute that you want to reveal without revealing uh, all your data. You've got five seconds in. Yeah, um, we are building better tools, but you should also be very careful about what you brag about online, because any bit of data that links like your real persona to your Bitcoin address starts to be a threat for people sending you malware or, God forbid, showing up at your house. Um, Thank you to our panel.